Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to wait a few more minutes for people to join. Um, and thanks for your patience. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone, and welcome to our first department spotlight of this quarter. Today, we're going to be going over some tools you all as Chicano Latino studies majors can use to explore career directions and identify internship and job opportunities. My name is Sophie, and I'm one of the peer consultants here at SARC. And today I'm joined by our director, Carissa, if Carissa, you want to say hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please submit them using the Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen. So without fur further ado, let's get started. So first off, we're going to be looking at two career exploration tools, the Occupation Outlook Handbook and focus to career. So the difference between the two is that focus to career is kind of personalized. And what I mean by this is that first it's run by UCI Division of Career Pathways and you'll have to use your UCI Net ID to sign in. So let me just show you what it looks like. So here you'll see this is the website for focus to career under UCI Division of Career Pathways. And once you click in, get started with focus to career, you'll be led to this page here. So this is my dashboard um, and then everyone will see their own dashboard. Um, and so upon entering, you can start to develop a career plan. And there are several self assessments you can take, including these here, which are the work interest values, personality, skills, and leisure self assessments. And in order to present you with a list of possible occupations that fit you, these self assessments try to understand your work style and your passions more. And after you are all done with all five of the self-assessments, you'll be able to combine your results and see which occupations are a good fit for you. And another cool feature they have on Focus to Career is this UCI-specific component, which is the what can I do with a blank major offered at UCI. And if I click on this here. Here, you'll be able to see a list of majors offered at UCI, and you'll be able to see what kind of occupations are held by people who have your major. And so if we just scroll down here, I believe it's located here, Chicano Latino Studies, if you click in, and yeah, so these are the occupations that they've listed, the national mean salary, a green, if it's a green job and if it has a bright outlook. And then you can select into each of the occupations to view more about like um, what an anthropologist, for example, does and things like that. And so know that the you're not limited to the occupations that are listed here, I would definitely recommend starting with the self-assessments because they don't, the, the self-assessments don't take into account your major. Some of us will leave UCI doing something completely unrelated to what we majored in. So what's important is our transferable skills and what your interest, where your, your interest lies. And those things are accounted for when you take the self-assessments and you combine the results. And so the other tool we have is the Occupation Outlook Handbook. This is how it looks like. The data is collected by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. 
Um, works pretty similar to focus to career, um, but it's more generalized. And obviously they don't show UCI specific majors, um, but you can still search by field of study. You can search by median pay and you can search by minimum education required. Um, see here, you can see like entry level education if you wanna select uh, occupations by that. And so we're just gonna go here, browse occupations and field of degree. And so the Chicano Latino studies major will be located under culture and gender studies. And then here you'll find a bunch of cool data and tables and charts um, to help you locate the occupation or fields you're interested in. Um, and so I think I find chart two the most interesting, which is like the distribution of workers um, with your degree by occupation groups. So you'll see here that like 20% of people with this major work in um, instruction and library occupations, and then you have 10% working in office and administration occupations and things like that. So I'm gonna go and turn it over to Carissa who will then talk about how to locate internship and job opportunities. Thank you so much, Sophie. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and also share my screen. Okay, so I don't know, being majoring in Chicano Latino studies, you have a lot of opportunities to search for a wide variety of different jobs as Sophie kind of pointed out. So you're certainly not limited. You can certainly go into healthcare, for example, or you can go into education um, or something completely different. So I do wanna emphasize that your major does not define your career path. Okay, so typically when you're searching for job postings, it's not gonna say you need to be a sociology major. You need to be a Chicano Latino studies major. They're just gonna say bachelor's required. However, in the transferable skills or in the responsibilities and skills required, that's where they're gonna put more specific detailed information that will um, help you realize if you're a match for the position or not, okay? So there are a few different internship job exploration tools that are available um, on campus at UCI or through the SARC um, or other resources on campus. So uh, many of you might have a LinkedIn. So I'm gonna briefly just talk about that. Um, LinkedIn is, is pretty much kind of like a social network, but for more um, for, for um, actual professionals, so kind of like a Facebook. Um, and it's definitely a great resource to be able to connect with other professionals in positions that you might be interested in or people that work at certain companies or organizations or nonprofit agencies that you would like to work at one day. And so it's very common um, for students to just like simply message and just approach a professional and ask, you know, hey, can I have a informational uh, uh, interview with you just to get to know what you do, um, if you like it, what are some of the challenges in your roles. And so this is a really great resource to utilize LinkedIn in that way. Um, so if you haven't jumped on LinkedIn yet, I definitely encourage you to do so because um, it could be a really great opportunity um, to search for various opportunities. LinkedIn also posts various internship and um, position um, job postings as well. You can even get like daily emails about all the new postings that have come up. There's also a really neat function on LinkedIn. Um, so let's say you're following UC Irvine on LinkedIn. You can actually take a look at who has graduated from UC Irvine and what industries are they working at, as well as what companies are they working at. And so um, this is a really great tool that you can also use. If we have some time, if you're interested and in, um, for me to talk a little bit further about that, I'm happy to do so. Just feel free to put that in the chat or Q&A. Um, another really great resource is Handshake. So many of you probably are very familiar with Handshake. Um, this is the Division of Career Pathways platform um, to advertise various full-time, part-time internship positions. And so this is probably the number one resource available to you on campus to find um, internships or careers once you're at that point in time. Um, one of the things that we definitely encourage you to do is just look at some of those position descriptions. Um, see what specifically they're looking at. If you don't feel like you're quite qualified enough, then reflect upon what are some of those experiences that you're still needing a little bit more um, to be able to be eligible for those types of position. Um, and also note that 
all the employers on Handshake, they're specifically looking for UCI students. And so it's just a great way to be able to connect with employers um, that way and to be able to apply to those types of positions. Um, the next thing is the Ant Eater Network. So um, I know that for some students, they may have not have heard of this, um, I suppose, platform that UCI has. It probably came about maybe three years ago. Um, so it's somewhat fairly new. Um, but the Ant Eater Network is an opportunity to engage with UCI alumni who are actually looking to be mentors to UCI students. And so if you're not on the Ant Eater Network yet, um, definitely encourage you to create yourself a profile. I think right now with the Ant Eater Network, they're really trying to also put um, postings on there for internships and positions as well. So it's another great opportunity to just reach out to a professional and ask them about their own personal and professional trajectory too, because um, they're actively looking to help students. And so that's also a really great way. And um, so that all kind of goes under networking, which is a very important aspect of finding that internship or that career that you are interested in. Um, and perhaps you might come across alumni who did receive their bachelor's in Chicano Latino studies. Um, the next sort of set of um, platforms that I wanna discuss are a couple internship databases. Um, so first is our SARC internship database. I'll go ahead and show you that in just a couple seconds. Um, but at SARC, we actually collect uh, quite a bit of information about internships um, available to UCI students that actually are not necessarily posted on Handshake. Um, and so if you, um, you know, as a social science student, you can actually get credit for your internships through a course called Social Sciences 197. If you have any questions about that, please let me know and I can talk about that further. Um, the next website that I'm going to talk is actually on the Department of Chicano Latino Studies. They have a pretty good web page about various internships in Washington, D.C. that you may be interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen with a couple of those items. So bear with me as I change my screens here. And then again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Alrighty. Okay, so the first one is gonna be the internship database. So um, this is our website, sark.soci.uci.edu. And we got lots of different goodies on here, um, but I'm gonna point out our internships tab, and then we have our internship database, and this is where it's gonna leave you. Um, we currently have uh, a few active remote internships. So these are organizations that are currently looking for students to work remotely. These are some past internships that other students have done um, in person. Not to say that they're not offering remote internships, they might be, um, but this is also just a really great resource. And uh, we kind of separate it into different categories. Um, so more like accounting or HR or law and legal, psycholo um, psychology or mental health. Um, many of you might be going in there. Family, child or social services um, is also probably a very popular one or government too. So that is the um, internship database. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and show is actually the Ant Eater Network. And let's see here. Okay, I'm not gonna go too into this, but this is what the Ant Eater um, Network page looks like. So it's just antnet.uci.edu. We go ahead and join the network and then you can create yourself a profile. Um, but they go step-by-step. Step. If you go under students, um, you'll be able to see like a step-by-step -step process of like how to actually create your own profile as well. Okay, and then the last one that I'm gonna show you is the Chicano Latino Studies website. Um, so if you go under uh, Chicano Latino Studies at uci.edu and then under, I believe it's undergraduate, um, actually, no, it's under resources and then internship opportunities. Um, they went ahead and crafted a few um, opportunities in Washington, D.C. 
that um, you might be interested in as a Chicano Latino Studies major. And so definitely encourage you to look through um, some of these internships. Um, Sophie in a little bit is gonna talk a little bit about UCDC on campus and how that could also be very relevant um, in attaining some of these internship opportunities as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Sophie. Thanks, Carissa. Okay, let's see. So finally, the two other tools we're gonna to be talking about is um, the UCI Study Abroad Center um, website and UCDC and UC Center Sacramento, also known as UCCS for short. Um, and these are all opportunities offered here at UCI that can give you a sense of what you wanna do in the future. And so I'm gonna start by talking about UCDC and UCCS first. Um, these are academic internship programs, one in Washington, D.C., and one uh, in Sacramento. And you can take classes and complete an internship program simultaneously. I believe first you have to apply to the program, and then they give you, um, and then you'll get access to a list of internships that usually hire um, UC. CDC and UCCS students. Um, there are internships in business, education, environmental policy, and law. And I believe there are some information sessions that are coming up and their deadline for fall 2021 um, is for UCDC, it's April 5th. And for UCCS, it's May 20th. Um, Carissa, is there anything else I'm missing for UCDC, any information? No, I mean, at this point in time, um, of course, the, the ability to be in person or remote, it's still kind of up in the air. So just kind of keep that in mind as you continue to apply for these opportunities. Okay, and then lastly, we have the UCI Study Abroad Center. Um, I know for a lot of students study abroad, um, you're wondering like, where should I go? What can I do there? And how can I fit that into my three year or four year plan? Um, on the UCI Study Abroad Center website, you'll be able to find this page dedicated to Chicano Latino studies majors. Um, and you'll be able to see different strategies for studying abroad and graduating on time. And then they also have suggested programs um, and then there's also another resource you can use for study abroad, and it, it's on the School of Social Sciences website under study abroad, and you'll be able to find this information sheet, which I'm not sure if it's updated, but um, it's tailored towards your major and they have things like popular destination and unique opportunities that people in your major have utilized in the past, um, as well as a sample course comparison sheet and like courses they took abroad. And what you'll notice for both the UC Capital internships and the study abroad programs is that they'll usually give you the option to browse by your field of study. And this is another reason why we suggest going on the career exploration tools first and kind of identifying where your passions lie and then going from there. And so those are all of the resources we have to talk about. Um, Carissa, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think we're ready for some questions. Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Q&A. Um, so please submit your questions down. Um, using the Q&A feature down below on your screen, and we'll answer them right now. And if there's any specific resources you'd like us to go a little bit further into in terms of the details, we'd be happy to do so as well. Oops, Krista, do you mind reading? Oh, yeah, of there. course. So the first question that we have is, are some of the internships open to non-Chicano Latino studies majors? Yes, absolutely. So for a lot of these internships that we've talked about, um, they're actually open to a variety of different majors. Um, and so it's certainly open if, let's say maybe you're only minoring in Chick Lab, for example. 
um, and you're something else, majoring in something else. Um, so yes, a lot of these are very much open um, to a variety of different majors. And then we got another question that is, can you go over the social science internship course one more time? Absolutely. Um, so the social science um, internship course is called Social Sciences 197. Okay, uh, with Social Science 197, it is a two to four unit course. It's um, all remote, virtual. There's technically not even any classes. Um, it's just a matter of fulfilling some biweekly assignments that reflect on your professional development and reflect upon your internship experience. So essentially the internship experience is the, the bulk of why you're getting the credit. Um, and the two to four units, um, it really depends on how many hours your internship is. So for example, if you have an internship that is um, for example, 50 hours, then you'd be looking at two units. Um, if it was a hundred hour internship for the quarter, you'd be looking at four units. Um, if it was paid, anything that's paid is actually only two units. Um, so it's something to kind of keep in mind. And it's just a great way, especially if your internship um, and there's a lot of those internships that don't pay, but they allow you to get academic credit. This is one way, really great way to do it in the School of Social Sciences. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And then I will also put the link uh, for more information about Social Science 197 in the chat as well. I know that enrollment is upon us. So if you have an internship this spring, um, or perhaps you might find an internship in the summer, you can also take 197, which is available during summer session one and summer session two. Um, so that know that that is an option um, for you as well. All right, so next question that we have is what were your majors, both panelists, and did it set you on a path towards your chosen career, discovered a different career along the way? In other words, where are you today in terms of your goals? That is such a great question. Um, Sophie, how about you go ahead and um, start this off? Okay, so I am a second year econ major. Um, I came in kind of not knowing what I wanted to do with econ. Um, actually, I was a business econ major and I kind of got that confused with business administration. Um, but then along the way, I kind of like morphed my interest in design with econ. And so that's how I got um, kind of into urban planning, which is kind of like a mesh of the two in a way. Um, and yeah, if that answers the question, because the question was kind of long and I didn't get the rest. Yeah, so the question was, what were your majors and did you set on a path towards your chosen career or discovered a different career along the way? Um, in other words, where are you today in terms of your goals? So if you feel like you answered that, then you're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since I've been in school, but <laughs> um, I majored in liberal studies. So I actually wanted to become an elementary school teacher um, while I was in college. And then my senior year, I decided actually teaching is not for me. And it wasn't until I was actually in the classroom um, and actually observing teachers that I realized I don't think I can do this. Um, and so I, after talking to mentors, talking to advisors, going to the career center on campus, I realized that I could actually work in higher education. Um, and I was super involved on campus and I finally realized like I can make this a career in helping other students, then yes, I am all on board. Um, so that's when I decided to go into um, a master's degree to kind of continue to um, build upon that, that passion and that foundation into college counseling. And so, um, although yes, did not to major in Chicano Latino studies, I still think that this is a really great example about how you can take any major and, and do something with it, uh, whether that is to pursue graduate school and do something else. Most graduate schools, they love to see a variety of different majors apply. Um, so it's not necessarily like you have to be of that major to apply, okay? Um, and so, you know, life kind of takes you on to a different direction and kind of just going back to what I previously said, um, that don't let your major define your career path um, because you could probably be doing something very different. Um, and I think Chicano Latino studies will certainly take you very far in whatever field or sector you decide to pursue. So um, 
in helping you kind of think about that or reflect about that, um, you know, think about the population that you want to serve. Perhaps it is, you know, underserved um, BIPOC population. Uh, what type of field that might be? Is it in government implementing policies? Is it in healthcare? Um, you know, helping with mental health, right? Um, there's so many different avenues that you can take, and it's just a matter of kind of reflecting, answering these types of questions, self-assessing yourself. So what Sophie said about all those assessments available on Focus 2 Career, um, and they're free, and that's something that you can easily take to kind of be able to narrow down your search. So hopefully that helps. A great question. Okay, looks like we got some more questions in. Uh, so we have someone saying, can you also share the links for the career websites you showed earlier? Absolutely, you're gonna be getting a email with all the links that we talked about today, including the actual presentation itself. We also have this webinar being recorded, so we'll also send out the recording too. Um, another question we got is, how do I know if it is for me and should one go to grad school just for the sake of it or with a purpose in mind? It's a great question. Um, so in terms of grad school, um, in terms of like pursuing grad school, you definitely don't wanna go just for the sake of not knowing what else to do. You have to have a purpose in doing that. Um, the admissions committee's not gonna really care for your essays or your personal statements if you're just like, well, you know, I have nothing else to do. I'm just gonna go to grad school. Um, you should have a, a purpose and in, in a, you know, a reason for going to graduate school, if that's to just advance your education, to get a better understanding, foundational knowledge, and just to be more competitive in the job market as well. Um, I think it's becoming more common that students do have master's degrees. Um, of course, you know, you also have to think about whether the master's degree is right for you. So one of the ways that you can do this is by using the resources that we actually shared with you. So one of them was Occupational Outlook Handbook, and it'll actually state what's the type of education that you need in order to do that specific career path that you're interested in. So often it'll say you need to pursue these types of master's degrees or PhD degrees, or you need to get these specific licenses. There are various career paths where a master's degree is not required. You can easily get a position like that with a bachelor's degree, for example. So that's kind of one way to really figure out whether like you do need an education, um, a higher education than a bachelor's degree just based on your career. Um, but here at SARC, we always encourage students to go on a graduate school and to continue and further your education. Um, that doesn't have to be now. Um, you can spend you know, a gap year trying to figure that out. Maybe it's five years and students still come back and decide to go to graduate school. So don't feel pressured to have to do it right after UCI. You can take your time with it, get a better understanding of what you really wanna do um, if you're prepared to go to graduate school because it is certainly a commitment. So not only a commitment to yourself, but it's a commitment to your other family members, right? Maybe you have a partner, maybe you're trying to think about your future. Um, it is also a commitment financially as well. So most master's programs are not funded. Um, you do kind of have to pay out of pocket, get out loans. Um, fortunately, most PhD students are fully funded. So um, these are just some questions to kind of ask yourself. Um, we also have a really great graduate school timeline that is also very helpful and it has some additional reflection questions that you can kind of ask yourself if this is the right path for you. Um, so we can certainly share that within a follow-up email and, and probably in the chat too. But great question. And I know that we're almost out of time. So if there's any other questions, feel free to submit or else we'll go ahead and end our time together. Okay, Sophie, do you want to go ahead and share any last minute items and wrap up? Yeah, so if there are no more questions, um, thank you all for attending our webinar today. We hope that uh, we covered everything. 
Um, and we'll be sending out an email, like Chris has said, after this webinar um, with all of the links and the resources we talked about today. Um, if you have any more questions, contact us via email or uh, schedule an appointment with us via the appointment system. And yeah, as always, we are here to help you on your professional and academic endeavors. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Bye.